Welcome to the Playground Podcast. Today, my guest is Tala Ardalan, mommy of three. She's going to tell us all about her mommy journey. Yes, I can't wait. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Shamim. Thank you for joining us, Tala. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, you as a mom <laughs> is not something apart from your pets. Let's clarify the three is two fur babies, one human baby. Okay. Because <laughs> everyone's going to be like, where are the other two? <laughs> she adopted them out. Yeah, seriously. So, okay, you, you have two dogs? I have two dogs, two Shiba Inus. Okay. One is Seven, Darwin. He's my boy, baby boy. He's the first baby. And my other baby is Akira. She just turned five. And Alessandra, which is my human baby, she just turned four, and all their birthdays are in the month of May. So they're all May babies. Are they Geminis? They are Taurus. Oh, all of wow. them are Taurus. Stubborn. Yeah. yeah, very stubborn, but grounded and very affectionate. But yes, super stubborn. <laughs> do they get on? <laughs> they they kids? do. They do. They, they, do? Get, they get along very well. Okay. Darwin tries to boss us around, but we don't let him. Yeah. Okay. But let's not talk about the dogs too much. If my dad watches this, he's going to be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> They're not humans. I'm sure he's asked to stop that. <laughs> <before I'm done. laughs> um, okay, so the... Do sorry, before that, you had a cat, right? I'm so, really sorry, guys. We're talking about Tyler's. I did. I had a cat for 18 years. So she, she was, was obsessed with, me with from her. High school, <laughs> high school till uh, till I met my husband. When I first started dating my husband, Samer, I had her. Okay. And unfortunately, I had to put her down because her health was declining, and that was the best thing to do for her. That yeah. was it. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so then you were dating Summer and... Dating Summer, love of my life, Aww. finally found the guy, amazing, yep. really funny, very good looking, a guy that, I mean, just didn't want to settle down. So when he proposed to me, a lot of girls were pissed off. They were like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what is this? I mean, he got a lot of messages. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, from who? Yeah. I mean, I think he didn't, think of I a didn't ask, names. he didn't tell. So I was like, it's all good, you know. We can definitely assume. You're mine now. <laughs> um, so then you got married. We got married and um, I've always wanted to have kids. Since I was a kid, I always wanted to have kids. Like I wanted to have a huge family, but I got married a little late. So only one kid so far right now. Um, we got married after, he proposed after six months of mm -hmm. us dating. We got married after a year of being engaged. And then we had Alessandra soon after. So she's four, so yeah. So you've been a mom for four years. It's been a mom for four years. And she was born right when COVID hit, May 5th. It wasn't when COVID hit, it was a little bit after when people were just freaking, you know, out. freaking out and dropping dead and no one knew what the hell was going on. It was when the hospitals were a disaster, piled up with people. You had her so in had, 2020. Yes, I had That's Ale. like peak May. It's the peak and they didn't allow uh, Samer. I had a um, chosen C-section and they didn't allow Samer in the room with me. So I was alone because they said of COVID rules. I was freaking out. I was all alone. I wish he was there, but he couldn't come in. I didn't allow my parents to come to the hospital because I was You're afraid about they them. would catch COVID. So it was just my brother who came and Samer, and that's it. And I needed my mom. Of course. You know, I need my mommy. Like the first night, it's the first kid. But it was just a really sad time, even though it was so exciting. I was having a kid at last. I've always wanted a child, like, you know, with my guy. And I'm so excited. And then my mom can't be there. And I... It was just so messy. What if we get COVID, you know, the baby, me. But thank God none of that happened. Which hospital did you have the baby at? Uh, Medcare Women and Children's Hospital. That's on Sheikh Zayed Road. It's on Sheikh Zayed Road. Um, yeah. So how was your pregnancy? Pregnancy was great. Okay. I had nothing was wrong. Okay. I mean, I didn't get any, like, I didn't feel sick or have any specific cravings. Um, I didn't, sometimes I'd forget I was pregnant until like I had a bump. Yeah. So I'm blessed, uh, yeah. in the matter that, you know, I was fine. I was boxing oh, for nice. seven months into my pregnancy, but I was boxing three years prior to that, which is why I continued. Uh, maybe that helped, mm -hmm. you know? Um, okay. So then tell me about that first phase, which is probably the hardest. And so, then you have COVID on top of it. Yeah. So I gave birth to Alessandra, a chosen C-section, which was fine. I got up and walked the first day. Everything was fine. I have a very high pain uh, uh, tolerance. So that was fine. But then when we got home, I didn't feel too good. And I don't think women realize that they have postpartum depression until they get out of it. Because I certainly didn't realize that until two years after when I actually got out of it. 
and you think you got out of it, then you're like, no, it kind of comes back sometimes. So I got home with my baby, uh, Alessandra. My parents were home. They see her for the first time. And I didn't have anyone helping me. And I was scared to hire someone because it was COVID. Like, what if they come in? What if they have COVID? What if they give yeah. the baby COVID? You can't touch everyone. Wow. You know, so my mom stayed with me for like two months and mm -hmm. she helped me. You know, I really can't specify how amazing my mother is. She was there day and night for me and my dad. My dad would be there, but my mom would sleep over. She would like, I would breastfeed and she would take Alessandra and put her to sleep. So Alessandra would sleep next to my mom and I would go back into the room and sleep. So she really helped me, but I, I felt like I was very depressed. I felt like I didn't want to hold my child. I was crying. I was telling my mom, you all lied to me. My life is over. I don't want to have a kid. You didn't tell me it was going to be like this. It was a disaster. The way I felt, I couldn't control it. I can yeah. usually control my emotions. I can usually control, you know, but this time I was like, it was taking over me. It was horrible. And Are you usually an emotional person? I am, but I have good self-control, which works well. And obviously not for two years, just feeling down and feeling. Exactly. So it didn't wow. feel good. Uh, my mom, but my mom helped me so much. She would be like, this is normal. Don't worry. It's not always. So there was one sentence that really helped me. Things will not always stay the same. This is going to change. This is a phase. You know, just get through it and it will be okay. It's not going to be this way. You're going to get back to normal. You're going to go out again with your friends. Everything will be fine. So this really helped me. I kept thinking, you know what? That's okay. This is not going to, it's not going to stay this way forever. This is just darkness. I need to get out of it, you know? Um, so for expecting moms, <laughs> tips, and honestly, I can completely relate. So yeah. And you're not alone, right? So if you once you come out of it, you realize that, wow, everyone goes through this. But the problem is nobody used to talk about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody tells you that the dynamics of your relationship with your husband change when there's a new human being there. Whether it's good or bad, before or good or bad, after or whatever it is, it changes. Like it breaks you mm -hmm. and then you rebuild it, the three of you together again. Or if it's four or five or, yeah. you know. It's just everything changes and that change, you know, with your hormones and, you know, you know, you have a baby and your stomach is still big and the baby is out and your hormones all over the place and you're sweating at night because your hormones are coming out. And like I would change my T-shirt three or four times at night. I was just like. It's cr it was crazy. I mean, I don't, sweat, I don't mixed sweat. with milk, by the way, yeah. guys. It's then, disgusting. Then you have milk coming out of your breast and you feel like a cow. And you're like, what the hell is this? You know, no one says it. No one talks this way. Everyone goes, oh, breastfeeding is so beautiful. You're okay, bonding with your child. You know, maybe, yeah. Maybe you might think, okay, yeah, great. It's beautiful. But like, what the hell? Why is like, you know, like, I, like, you know, you know, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, am I a cow? This is strange. It's, yeah. it's brand new. It's strange. It's weird. I don't feel good about it. But you can't talk about it. It's taboo. You know? Because, oh my God, it's a blessing, right? Exactly. And, like yeah, you had a kid. People can't have children. Okay, but I had a kid. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, it's great. But this feels weird. Why can't I say this feel, feels weird? Why can't I say it out loud? Like loud and free. Why can't I? So say it, Judgment. Ladies, because say we, it. Get, we get judged. Yeah, you should say it. You should <clears> express it's important. It's really important. I think one of the biggest shocks for me was the day, like I gave birth, say today in the morning. And then the next day I got into the bathroom when you can finally walk because I had a C-section as well. And I look at myself in the mirror and my stomach is still massive. Yeah. And I think that is one hell of a shock because nobody tells you, right? No, nobody tells you your stomach is going to stay the same size <laughs> for a couple, well, for like a month. And then a little gradually starts going down. Uh, but you're going to have a baby, okay? So focus on the baby. Oh, and you know what's another funny uh, part that everyone tells you? You have to sleep when the baby sleeps. <laughs> That's the joke like, of the century. That is the joke of the century. And every time I see the reels, I just, I'm like, <clears throat> this is just, this is a joke. Like, is this, this is really a joke. You have to sleep when the baby sleeps. No, I don't want to. A, what if I'm like doing stuff? It's during the day. What if I need to do stuff for myself? So what would I do when Alessandra would sleep? I would go wash my hair, blow dry my hair, obviously myself, because, you know, we couldn't go out. It was COVID. Mm -hmm. Couldn't go anywhere. And you wanted to feel good about yourself. I wanted to feel good about myself. So I was trying to help myself, you know, and everyone was like, no, you have to sleep. And I'm like, Get, you know, don't tell me what to do. I need to do what I feel like I need to do here. So then you have a bunch of people who have had children 
He'll come and tell you things like, you should leave the baby in the other room when you sleep at night. You, you know, you need to have that separation. You can't stick the baby to you all the time. And this is not good for the baby. And I'm thinking, why isn't it good for the baby? Like, why are people telling me things that I don't, I don't necessarily want to do what these people are telling me to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the wrong thing to do. I feel like I want to stick the baby to me. I feel <laughs> like I want to cherish this moment as for as long as I can, you know, because I'm not going to have it back anymore. And, and then you have like your friends and, you know, close friends and people who are older, people who have had kids and their kids have become older telling you this is wrong. This is what you're doing is wrong, you know, and you feel shit. You're already depressed. Your first time mom, you don't know, is it wrong? Is it right? But your gut's telling you to do it, but they're telling you not to do it. Maybe you should listen to them because they've had kids. I, you know, you get so confused. Yeah. I completely hear you. Keep going. Like, I feel every word you're saying, I can completely relate. But then at the end of the day, I went with my gut and I do what's good for me. And if people want to judge me and they want to, like, tell me it's wrong or whatever, I'll be like, OK, this is what I've learned. Like, if someone yeah. tells you something you don't like, you just nod your head. hundred percent. And you go, OK. Yeah. You know, and then you go on to do whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like after you give birth, that's like when you're most vulnerable, right? You feel crap yeah. you're tired for me the sleep lack of sleep kills me like don't feed me for a month that's just okay. let me sleep yeah i needed you to know? sleep i really needed to sleep and i'm really lucky i'm very fortunate that i have such an awesome and caring and loving mother that like came and just like stayed in my house and helped you for two months and not just for two months she's helping me till this day i don't want to have a nanny for alessandra and no judgment for yeah. people who have nannies no problem. Like, but for me, that's not what I want. That's not what I choose. Sure. So when I'm at work, my mother is with Alessandra because she doesn't go to nursery yet. She's starting. Okay. And when I'm home, I'm with her and that's it. But my mom, she wants to do that. It's not like I force her, you know? <clears throat> yeah, she wants so to. She, I'm so fortunate to have such an amazing mother. And is Alessandra close to your mom? She's super close to okay. mom. I feel like she's more her mom and I'm more her friend. Yeah. <laughs> With Alessandra. I believe that, guys. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> she's see Tyler's Instagram. <laughs> they paint together. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm just generally fortunate to have such an amazing family. And my mom, dad, and my brother are so supportive. And as two men, you know, they're just so awesome. And they've always had my back and they've always... Um, supported anything that I wanted to do and pushed me for it. I've been there for it. And yeah, so it was through this time, they also really supported me in a way that men can, of course. So yeah. what about um, if you need to run errands or do something at night or go out at night? So if I want to go out at night, either my husband stays home with uh, Ale or if he wants to go out, I stay home. Or if we both want to go out together, we ask my parents, both of them, which they love. They come and they they spend a couple of hours with her and they play with her and they, they love kids. Yeah. Um, and they love her, obviously. So and she loves them. So they have a great time together. Well, I'm pretty sure you're the only mom in Dubai that maybe doesn't have a nanny or maybe you're in that 10 percent. Yeah, I don't. I had a nanny the first um, I want to say couple of months, but it didn't work out. I got a lot of anxiety because I feel like I was babysitting the nanny and Alessandra. Yeah. So it didn't work out for me. I wasn't comfortable with the dynamics of it. So I was just yeah. like, this is not going to work out. Fair enough. And I found another way and now she's going to go to school. So it's going to be How fine. Done. Yeah, it's done. So yeah. plans for baby number two, maybe? So I uh, definitely want another dog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, white Sheba, Samer, if you're listening. <laughs> white Sheba. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I'm 40. And I think that uh, at this age, I, f I don't know. I, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Whatever. If I were to have another child, it would definitely be for Alessandra because yeah. I have such a tight uh, relationship with my brother, my older. I mean, I just it's just me and him. It's me and Sean. And he's always been there for me. Like if I needed anything, he would just, you know, he'd be the one I call for anything in life. He's like my backbone, you know, I, I, I basically call him for anything. He's and awesome. Guys, <laughs> check him out. You should have him. Check him out for sure. <laughs> should have him on you next. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, I, it, it, that's the only thing that makes me feel sad is that she won't ever have anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, because that bond I have with him is super important for me. Like, you we never know. speak all the time. I call him in the morning, calls me in the middle of the day. And, you know, so, yeah, you never know. Let's see. So, Tyler, tell me, what 
how did you get out of this dark place that you were in? Okay, so I told you I was boxing for seven months. That helped? Um, exercising definitely helps uh, mentally. It's, um, it's kind of like you're a natural therapist. So I couldn't really do any classes after I gave birth because it was COVID and I had a newborn baby and um, I didn't want to get the personal trainer into the house and, you know, COVID stuff. Yeah. So I used to hate running, anything but running, right? Um, you really need stamina, like to build up your stamina in order to be able to run properly. But that was the only thing I could do. I lived in a community. So what I would do is if I felt like I was losing my mind or going crazy, I would literally just open the door and run. I would run and I would run for as long as I could, for as hard as I could. Like I would just really like angry run, you know? And then I would stop and like kind of catch my breath and I would push myself to run again. But I'd really have to push myself. It was really... It was like a mental, like it was mentally challenging to have to push yourself and stop and push yourself and kind of build that stamina. But it also it started to feel really good. So I was like, this feels really good. I really like this. And I kind of got addicted to it. So I would run like every night, whether in the morning or whenever I had somebody who could take care of her for just 10 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes. Just go around the block, go outside, don't go far, but just go for a run, sweat it out. I was sweating all the toxins out. Everything was coming out and it felt really good. So that really helped me. One, two, I started eating very healthy as soon as I gave birth because I didn't like the way I looked mm -hmm. and that's OK. We can say that we can say that, you know, I felt like I, I gained a lot of weight. I gained 17 kilos, even though I ate very well and I exercise. Your body will do what your body needs to do. Mm -hmm. It held in water or whatever it was. So I gained a lot of weight. And I really wanted to lose it because I didn't feel good about it. I, mm -hmm. I don't like gaining weight. I like to stay a certain weight. So I started eating very, very healthy. And I started, uh, I would always do my nails. I would always do my hair. Um, even though I was home, I would dress nice. It would. These are things that make me feel good. Yeah. So I would do the things that make me feel good, even though it was weird because I wasn't going anywhere. It was COVID. But I would do me. So I would do the things that made me feel good. I would do my exercise. I would eat healthy and I'd see progress, which made me happy. So slowly, slowly, I pulled myself out of it. But key number one was exercise. Number one, for sure, above all. For every woman, not just you. For every woman, for everyone. Okay. Exercise makes... really helps you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Yeah. Um, okay, husband. so... So the husband. <clears throat> yeah, I want to go into the partner sort of thing because after you have a child, I mean, yeah. in my opinion, I think kids are the biggest test when it comes to relationships. Yeah, 100%. But who am I? I'm not expert based on my experience. Yeah. They're either going to break you completely yeah. or make you so much closer. So how was your experience? I mean, you were in a really dark place. So, so I was in a really dark pl place. And um, look, everyone's different. Like every guy is different. Definitely my 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 husband didn't understand what was going on like he was like what's happening like this is not the tala that i know and i was trying to explain to him that you know you can read about it and he's like but as much as i read about it i still want to understand what you're feeling and sometimes i feel like you have to explain to them that it's not about feeling exactly what i'm feeling but you just need to listen to me and understand that i'm not okay let's just say that in in whole i'm not okay you know and let's you know try to work with that let's let's try for you to like maybe spend more time with me or maybe help me out with the baby but I feel like he was also a little nervous mm -hmm. because it was you know first time dad and we didn't know what to do with her um but he did help he helped a lot like he was there when I didn't know what to do with her or I didn't like I don't know if if uh, she would like throw her milk back up or changing her diapers or if I had to go like take a shower and no one was there to watch her, he would watch her. And I know that men don't usually, I know there's men who do this and men who don't do this at all. So he was kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. He was in the middle of those two like completely daddy, daddy guys and like non baby, like first phase men, yeah. you know? Um, so, but I tell you the dynamics of our relationship did change. Okay, how so? When she was born. I feel like I don't really specifically have a way to tell you how it changed, but I just feel, I'll tell you how it felt. I feel like everything broke. 
everything that we had before, it's like a mirror and you smashed it. And then you had to kind of put the pieces back together where it fits properly with another, like, like a little extra piece <laughs> that you have to fit in there, you know? So, yeah. I don't was, think I've ever heard a better description. Is it good? Um, <laughs> is it visually? Can you visualize that? You are so, especially that first baby when it's a shock for everybody. Yeah. And I feel like we never, um, or we underestimate we underestimate how the fathers feel. For sure. We don't think about them. We only think about, we gave birth, it's all about us, which it should be, and it is. But at the end of the day, they're there. They're in the background. <laughs> you know? They are, they are. And, and it's like, a huge responsibility for them. It's, it's a shock to their system. Yeah. Like, whoa, this human, I need to take care exactly. of it for the rest of like, my life. What do so. I do? Do I come forward? Do I stand back? Do I let you have your space? Because most of the time he's like, I thought maybe you want your space. And I'm like, no, I don't want my space. I want you in my space too. And he's like, oh, okay, you know, I didn't know. I was just, maybe you're not okay. You know, they don't know. You know men, you know, we, we feel like, I feel like we think we know men, but we really don't. We don't. They're like a whole other creature. They don't know themselves. <laughs> and they don't know themselves either. But um, yeah, we, we, we built it back. I mean, everything that was strange and weird and that whole phase of me being depressed definitely affected the the relationship like it was weird everything was weird I was like another Tala for him you know I was another Tala for me too and uh no everything came back great like it takes a while however long it may take you need to give it some time and then it comes back the best advice I have for anyone who's going through this is don't push to get things back and there is no normal like let's get things back to normal this is not how it used to be there is no use to be it that's over you have something new now there's a new human human being here and this is this is a whole new uh world that you're gonna step into mm -hmm. with this person this little baby this little stranger that you guys don't know yet you know and you haven't made memories with or you, you have no idea how to deal with anything together the three of you yeah. So it takes time and you need to really let it just take that time and then it'll get there. Wow. Um, it's funny, Tala, because if I'm watching your life, I, you know, online, I would never yeah. think you were going through any of this. So it's not nice that you are so strong for sharing it, you yeah. know, and just opening up because a lot of women, I think, will benefit from this. I'm hoping, I really hope I can help a lot of people by you know, expressing everything that I went through. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. I'm so happy that I'm on here with you because I've really been wanting to express all these things I went through, like all these different points. I just want everyone to hear it and feel it and know that if they're going through it, they're not alone. And they'll be okay. And There's a light okay. at the end of the time. And it's uh, going to be the best thing that's ever happened The to best you. thing. It'll be amazing. It just takes time. You just need to let it take its time. That's it. One thing I love about your life, if you're yeah. watching Tyler's life mm -hmm. online, is you guys are always together. You travel all the yeah. way to New York. She's on the together. plane with you. Yeah. You're in like, I don't know where in New yeah. York. She's with you. Yeah, and I feel like a, you've... We have a good relationship. But you also, you've... It's not easy to have a toddler with you no, at all times. No, it's time. not easy. It's not. The, most of the time, I'm like, I, I always tell Samer, I'm like, I'm dying. And he goes, <laughs> he, I, like, I need to sleep. Sleep, like you said, number one. I'm like, I'm dying. I need to sleep. I'm not getting sleep, you know? And he, yeah, he's always like, he always jokes. He's like, my friend, you'll sleep when you, when you die, you'll have enough sleep, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's one of those, eh? <laughs> yeah, he's one of those. Uh, yeah, he's funny. I can't say it the way he says it, but he's, he says it in a funny way. So I'm like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, I'm not dying anytime soon. <laughs> but yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. I mean, how people make it look on Instagram, on social media, let's say, is a lie. It's all a lie. I don't look the way I look when I wake up. I have like the puffiest eyes. My hair is like this, like Alessandra's on me. I'm like, I'm a disaster. You know, it takes me like a good 40 minutes to get ready in between mommy, 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 <laughs> oh open this, God. mommy, 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 you know? Do you remember what happened today? <laughs> mommy, mommy. Like I was leaving the house and it was like, can I come? Can yeah. I, and I just, I was going to lose my, it's like the mommy and I'm like, ah, you know? And, and you feel bad. Cause everyone's like, oh my God, you're such a good mom. I'm like, God, no. I'm like, no. I'm like, yes, I love my daughter and I spend a lot of time with her, but guys, I yell a lot. I'm like, <laughs> you're not there to see it. 
Like I yell a lot. It's because I can't. Like Show us an lot. example, tell her. Like I, don't, I can't. Next time I'll get her here. But like I'll just be like, like sometimes I tell her like, be quiet. You talk too much. And then I'm like, oh my god, you can't say that to her. That's really bad. You know? <laughs> like someone's gonna say that to her when she's older, and she's gonna listen because her mom said that to her when she was younger. Like that's horrible. Yeah, because you worry that you're creating issues, exactly. right? Because you see people yeah. with issues around you. I don't want to do their parents. Do to I don't want to do the trauma. Give her the trauma. Conscious parenting her. only, please. Yeah. Hello? seriously but i try my best and i know everybody everyone does yeah. everyone tries their best and your best is good enough and if you yell that's fine and if you're not in the mood that's perfectly fine so i want to get your opinion on gentle parenting versus like us being like i mean i tried gentle parenting i'd be like what's Talia? gentle parenting it's like you know when you pick them up from somewhere and they're tired or hungry or whatever and they're nagging and man the tantrum and you say, oh, baby, it's okay. And you hug them and you oh, say, no. what do you want? How I know how you feel versus be quiet. I'm going to drop you off right yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> versus what's wrong with you? What's the problem? Do you know there are children in the world who don't have clothes, don't have food, who are dying, you know? And so then which you're one do you prefer? Which I, one do I, you do? I definitely don't do gentle parenting. I'm not a gentle parenting person. I love her a lot and I give her a lot of love as in, Every day I tell her how much I love her, how smart she is, how happy I am to hang out with her, how awesome it is to be with her, um, that she's so beautiful, which is one of the last things I always say, because I don't want oh, her I to like grow that. up thinking, oh, I'm beautiful. You know, this is like all I have. No, smarts. You're a smart girl. You're very smart. Everything you do is smart. You know, you think about things before you do them. You think about things before you say them out loud because you can't take back something after you say it out loud. So I, you know, oh, these I are like all, that. yeah, these are all the things I tell her all the time. Zamar makes fun of me. <laughs> He's like, what are you I doing? No, you're absolutely right. I'm like, I'm like you're girls, recorder. you need to like yeah. build the like, like repeating, confidence. Repeating, repeating, repeating. So no guy comes along and tries to mess exactly, with Exactly, to break that, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so two more things I want to discuss. I want to know your favorite brands since you've had Alessandra. Okay. So like things that For stuck kids? in your mind. Anything that helps uh, you, give me three names. I love, first of all, Zara's awesome. I love Zara. Um, uh, second, Jackadie. I love Jackadie. It's a little bit expensive, like more on the expensive side. Love. Gap, amazing. Uh, materials, 100% quality. cotton, quality, amazing. Uh, yeah. I love Those how Talia, are... Talia, went, Talia, Talia is my daughter, guys. Talia is my guest. <laughs> okay. I love how you went straight into the fashion. What about like yeah. operational, like running, making things happen? Whether it's like strollers or... So strollers, I have milk a... Or Oh my God. For milk, it's Avant. Okay. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? I think, yeah. And uh, for milk, for what I give her to drink, which she's still on milk and it's really bad, I have to wean her off of that. Um, it's Aptimil. Yes. Aptimil is amazing. She's doing Aptimil 4 now. Uh, she loves her milk, but I need to give her like proper cow's milk now, but she just doesn't want to get off that. You can still keep her on Aptimil, I yeah, think. Yeah, I know. Three to six, it I says. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it smells pretty good to me. <laughs> I haven't tried yeah. it, but... Um, for that, for the stroller, I have a, man, I don't know the names of these things. I have like one stroller. I held her for the first two and a half years. She wouldn't sit in a stroller. Really? I have back problems. <laughs> yeah. I go to like the Cairo and I get, um, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of massages. So what stroller did you end up getting? So hearing? now I have, I think a yo-yo, yo-yo. I have a yo-yo. Babies. Mm -hmm. I have a yo-yo. That's what it's called, a yo-yo. Okay. Uh, very good. Folds in one go. Uh, you can take it on the airplane with you, which is awesome. I need that. Yeah. So Interesting. Those are the brands. What does success look like to you when it comes to your daughter? Like, I want you to tell me when she grows up, how, what will make you happy? Ooh, what will make me happy when she grows up for success? I want her to be a happy, I want her to have a happy soul. I want her to be a very confident and independent human being. And whatever she chooses that makes her happy will make me happy. That's it. <laughs> thank you. I love thank that. Thank you. On that note, Tyler, thank yeah. you so much for Thanks coming for on. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed this. Guys, mamas, I know sometimes you want to reach out to the guests. Please feel free if you've gone through what Tyler has gone through to reach out to her, have a conversation. She's no yes. expert, but she's been through that. it, which yeah. is better than an Ask expert. Any questions you need. Thank you, Tala. Love you. <laughs> Yay! That was really nice. Yeah? I really like that. Yeah, I really like that.